little high. How's your week been? Good? That's right. So it's nice catching up again. And we promise that the next 25 minutes will be an OMG blast. Sure thing. We have a great show planned. Starting out with the Black Shines Brother show over the last weekend. Like AK will say, take a chill pill. We'll give you a first hand feel of the show. Well, Mila, it was basically about fashion, food, music, and all that stuff. And the turnout at this show was something else. It was like half of you know, the youths in and out of Abuja came for this show. So you can imagine what went down. I'm sure it was nothing less than a good vibe. Nothing less than good vibes, actually. Are you serious? Yeah. We also have a story with a different vibe. I'm sure you have heard of the cross dresses, but they are not that common sight, especially in conservative societies such as ours. But AK has a way of meeting interesting characters. Excuse you? That stereotype? Don't worry, you'll get the gist later on All on the right, show. I'm <laughs> but honestly, the entertainment industry usually has such colorful characters. Some brazen, like what we saw at the show, and some very coded. So, but you know, I, I met some at the Black Shines Brightest show and another at the dance studio. Mm. We had a chat with him and you'll get to see that later on the show. There's also something for the movie buffs. A movie shot on a train in Nigeria with the dynamics of production. I can only imagine what they had to contend with. Well, I guess the answer lies just ahead. I am Akemini Williams and welcome to the show. We promise you, a good time. Welcome to Click Light on NTA, where we run the entertainment show differently. I am Butuo Miller. Excuse ya, that's stereotype. I'm a girl. Because I think we all know the tag that comes with oh, a man dancing in heels or a man um, being a feminine dancer. It was always the plan. I already had all the videos. Here we go with the E News. The 2022 AMVCA's nomination list has been released officially and some of Nigeria's favorite stars and biggest movies have received multiple nominations. One of such hit movies that has bagged about nine nominations is Funke Akindele's 2021 Omogeto the Saga. However, while the producer Funke Akindele celebrated this feat on social media on the other hand one of her production crew nigerian film score composer kolade morakinyo was sulking over being cheated out of his intellectual property in the nominated movie he called out the producer of the movie funke akindele and jjc skills for allegedly giving someone else credit for sound editing the movie which he says was done by him according to the initial amvca nomination list the sound editor category for the movie omogeto the saga was credited to puffy t for which Morakinyo cried foul and described as a clear case of monkey the walk baboon the chop. Well, guess what? Turns out Morakinyo's outcry did not go unnoticed by the award organizers as they have updated their official website with his name in the category. Nigerian music enthusiasts are crying foul on social media after the Billboard credited American music stars Beyonce and Drake as among the artists instrumental to the rise of Afrobeats worldwide. This came following an announcement by Billboard on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022 on the creation of a new chart called the U.S. Afrobeats chart, set to go live on March 29th, 2022. The announcement was greeted with great anticipation due to the continuous success of various Afropop artists and the adoption of the genre by various artists around the world. One positive thing about this is the fact that um, this is going to create, you know, an avenue for emerging artists to, you know, explore and develop um, a fan base that is even outside of, you know, their continent and outside of uh, places where, you know, they wouldn't naturally go without this. However, the news turned sour when the article attributed the widespread recognition of Afrobeats to the likes of Beyonce and Drake, leaving out the key Afrobeat stars like. Bonner Boy, the winner of Best World Music Album at the 62nd Grammy Award, Davido, the crooner of Fall, which once held the record of the longest billboard chatting song by a Nigerian, and the OG wave makers like the P Squares, D Benj, and the likes were also not credited in the article. Many felt that Beyonce and Drake were over credited in a genre they only borrowed from. <laughs> Uh, 
Following the altercation between the immediate past First Lady of Anambra State, Ibele Obiano, and wife of former Anambra State Governor, Bianca Ojuku, at the inauguration ceremony of Governor Saludo, online comedians and skit makers have practically run riot with their imagination as they have feasted on the incident. <laughs> Madam Gold, a question I got as if you want name. What are you doing here? Where about this? A question I got as if you want name. What are you doing here? On the social media, they have recreated various versions of the scenario with rip cracking skits. Their creative recreation of the details practically leaves us in stitches. So I think it's that's true. one of the yeah, mm -hmm. that's too. Daddy, why? I would like to have a word with your wife. I don't you have my only wife. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any wife as a We all know why we got at this. She said your husband can never get married to another woman. And even if he does, you would not attend the wedding. So, what are you doing here? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. There was also a clip of a fitness trainer incorporating a new workout routine into his class named the slap. Everybody should learn how to slap. Some of these kids got several reposts and attracted more followership on social media for the creatives behind the skits. In his comments on the incident, Governor of Anambra State Charles Saludo alluded to the creativity of Nigerian skit makers. Hit me up when you're off for something Wanna put some mayonnaise on the rest This I've finished They gon' wanna see me when I pull up with the best That's it on Entertainment News Do follow us on all our social media platforms Just checking on my balance and check, check My business If I broke none of these mess I'm gonna try to get the right to change Nigerian skit makers never disappoint. They're always on point. They've been understanding the assignment since 1900. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on a recent Saturday evening, I was in the office and I heard music blurring a kilometer away from the headquarters. Mm. And um, my natural instinct was like, what's going on? Wait, let me guess. You moved towards the beat, yeah? <laughs> of course, what do you expect? You never cease to me. My instincts, you know, just took me. You know, I traced the place to the International Conference Center where a show tat, Black Shines Brightest, was, you know, in full rage. What was it about? Well, basically about celebrating music, fashion, food, and uh, guess what? Who? <laughs> you, you don't even ask me what you say, who? Because you're already expecting yes, a star, yes, yeah? Yes. Truly, there was a star. Um, Black Bow was the commander. Oh, uh, uh, are you serious? And uh, Faith, Asaki, and many others. Oh, that's cool. So I missed out. You missed out. This is where the beats throbbed as young people massed into the open space of the Arts and Culture Exhibition Pavilion in the ICC Abuja for another night of fun. Music, food, drinks, fashion, it was a rich cocktail that they fed on. It was all vibes on vibes with a live performance by Abuja Music Sister Sensation Oyizamei kicking off the show. While the performances were going on, there was a fashion parade running simultaneously with models showcasing a variety of fashion pieces by different indigenous designers. However, almost all the designs were western in orientation and expression. And a sea 
One of the designers says the idea was to project the capacity and potential to compete with international brands on all levels. This is just an avenue to showcase like what we Nigerians can do, what Africans can do. And through my brand, Never Stop Elevated, I'm, I'm taking it to the world basically. I'm basically telling them that we have a better fashion sense than them. It's just that we're limited, but with a little bit more creativity, we can literally bridge the gap between the, 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 the West and Africa basically. You just said something about being limited, right? What, what do you mean? Limited in what way? Limited in terms of, uh, of even your materials, like the fabrics you, you need, like importing like the fabrics, like you get that kind of thing. It's not even about money, for example, because some people have the finance, but they are limited because you have to import something or get, and then like there's customs, there's all of that. the midst of all the Zaga Zoom Zoom, my antenna picked up what seemed to be an aberration. Cross-dressing. This is not what you see regularly in Abuja. And the men were acting like women too. Ooh la la. For a second, I thought I was in Las Vegas. I tried to strike a conversation with some of them. Are you a girl or a guy? Um, I was having a girl. Are you a girl? Yes. No, you don't have any boots. Excuse ya, that stereotype, I'm a girl. No! I do not <sighs> Same old queerness we see on social media. But the night was really about music, and Fave, popularly dubbed as the next big thing in Nigerian music industry, took the stage to perform some of her 2021 and 2022 hit tracks, including Obsessed. What's your opinion on Nigerian fashion? Do you think as a musician, as an artist, our fashion is glam enough to compete with the likes, the international female artists, the likes of Cardi B, Nicki Minaj? Yeah, most definitely. I think that with the power of social media and um, it being very, very possible for you to um, access another man's um, culture and style from afar, they won't be able to hide, you know, the talent that we have in Nigeria as it is now in the fashion industry. I think we have a lot to offer and us as um, artists and, um, you know, producers, when we're on stage and when we're in front of the camera, we're going to be repping the fashion industry because the people who are making our clothes, the stylists, you know, they're doing it and they're, you know, Nigerian stylists as well. This was followed by the likes of Psycho YP and Asake. Just before the sex over love star Black Bones came on stage, we caught up with him backstage to get his reaction to the controversy, the video of what seemed to be about him and his girlfriend stirred. People want to hear about love. People love love. So I'm actually going against what people naturally like. So it's crazy. If I don't believe in it, then there's no point. That time when you posted a video with a girl, people actually felt like the very first video you posted was actually your girlfriend. But when you noticed that, you know, there was an uproar and maybe people were like tongue lashing you, you had to quickly, smartly bring in other girls to change the game. And I think that was pretty smart of you. No, it was always the plan. I already had all the videos you get. I already had it. I made the videos last year, like in, in um, November. So none of those girls are really your girlfriend? None of them. Okay, we don't know your girlfriend. That means your girlfriend is somewhere. I don't have a girlfriend.
was another fun weekend for young folks on the fast rising Abuja entertainment scene. <laughs> Now I get the stereotype gist. <laughs> well, meanwhile, dancing as a career is fast becoming popular in the entertainment industry, as Nigerian music has become so huge, and if I may say, lucrative too. Trust me, in the past, if you wanted to be successful as a dancer, you would usually have to move to places like Atlanta, sure. uh, Las Vegas, yeah? Yeah, you know, you know where they do the special dance. <laughs> Well, but all the events I've attended in Nigeria, there are always dancers. I mean, yeah. I mean, they take center stage, performed, they've performed, you know, and I'm, I'm not even going to talk about video vixens, you know, the color they add yeah. to videos. Yeah, but I met with one of such professional dancers in Abuja. Mm. I can't wait to see. That's it, take it down. And one, two, three, four. That's it. Keep it going, keep it going. Bal Hi, good evening. How are you? I think I came at a good time. What's happening? Wonderful happened? time. This is a dance session called Omogi on Heels. It's coming up. Hey. Hey. Are you a dealer? No, I'm not a dealer. I'm Clifford. Clifford. AKA Omogi. Oh. I teach women how to dance, walk in heels. Oh, yeah. I see. Help them get in touch with their femininity. Five. Six. Um, I'm 24. I started dancing in 2016. I was, she said I had two left legs. Yeah, I couldn't dance to save my life. Yeah. And then, um, getting into dancing, I found this style that, because I mean, every dancer has a style that suits them and it's effortless to them. And me, for me, my style of dance is called jazz. It's kind of feminine and not really common with what you see male dancers do. But yeah, for me, this is my own style. This is what makes me unique. And so in 2016, I started dancing. I found a dealer, or rather, should I say, she found me. And then I started training under her. And before I knew it, I started. What made you go into dancing? Being that you never even knew how to dance. Oh, yes. Well, I always enjoy dancing. But I think after school, after school, while waiting for my admission and everything, it started off as a hobby. And then it became like a job. So for me, it was like very therapeutic. It helped me lose weight because I was on the big side. So yeah, it doesn't help me lose weight and... You mean you were like, are you kidding me? I'm yeah. always really fascinated when I get to meet people that tell me like, oh, I was on the big side. I actually I was doing some kind of fitness training. Like, how big were you? Um, I'd say a 96 kg. What? And you wear what now? 63. Oh. Okay, 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 go on. Majority of the ladies that I've worked, I've been privileged to work with, like recently, couldn't walk on heels like for a certain hours. And now, and now you see them strutting around in their offices in their evening gown on five inch, six inch heels. So yeah, seeing that makes me really happy and makes me like, I'm doing a job well done. Do I need to say that because I think we all know the tag that comes is oh, a man dancing in heels or a man um, being a feminine dancer. So we all know the tag that comes with that. And like I said, I ignore it because it's not important. And I would say it's really not necessary. What is what is my personal life is my personal life. What is my business life is my business life. So whatever I put out there is what I want you to know. And as long as I'm not doing anything wrong, hurting anybody, it's all good. Not totally. I mean, my, um, using my mom as an example, she told me finish school first, then you can venture into anything you want. And I think that's the that's the pedestal parents are on now. So finish, get a degree first, then anything after that is up to you. But yeah, I think 
they are more accepting of it now than before. But I mean, before they will see you as a dancer, they will see you as a wayward person or a person that is not serious with their life. But I think we are slowly changing that narrative right now. Personally speaking, for me, social media plays a very important role in that because I mean, this my class is filmed, and then when it's put online, I've had a lot of people tell me, "Oh my God, I've seen your dance class." And to be very honest, people are going through a lot. Yes, and they need something to just. I mean, stress is not just physical, it's mental as well. So they need something to get their minds off that mental stress. And this for them is that way. So when you uh, introduce, oh, this is a dance class, come and do this. Some people just need a place to be themselves and express certain things they will not express outside. Okay, so working on confidence, that's one part. Let's talk about the business angle of dance. Um, which of it, which of the gigs is most lucrative? Is it the stage performance, music? You do music videos, yeah? Yes. Okay, fine. So which of them is most lucrative right now, like in Nigeria? In Nigeria, I would say... Well, I can't speak for other people. I would say personally. Personally, I think it's a little bit of both. Stage performance and then teaching one-on-one. -on -one. So because we find a balance within that. I mean, it's not every day you're going to perform on stage. I was saying something about little sips of wine you know you keep drinking it because it's really nice and then you get intoxicated I feel that's what this cross-dressing is getting to in Nigeria and even Abuja you just see them one two three and you're like it's harmless before you know it they're everywhere and it's no longer a coded thing it's going to be brazen they're walking they're like pushing for their rights to walk pushing for their rights to you know do whatever yes so I, I don't know I think this thing is something deserves two minutes of silence what do you say but can our viewers wait? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to keep you waiting, but you know, let's go over to movies now. I was personally intrigued with a movie that was shot in a moving train. I mean, the prolific filmmaker, what's his name? Um, Regis of Femi. Perfect. I mean, he pushed the boundaries of filmmaking by shooting the movie Conversation in Transit, almost entirely in a moving train. Very true. Mila, was it a Kaduna, Abuja uh, train? No, no. Lagos, Lagos, you better wait. Amazing, amazing. Well, let's take a look at some of the interesting moments in the making of the movie. Judging by the scenery and plot of Conversation in Transit, the cast say the movie is going to be a hit to be seen universally. Most of the film is, is, is all in one day. <laughs> it's all in one day with a lovely backstory to all the stories, to all the moving parts in the train. The originality of the story is top notch. Something that um, I think not only Africa, internationally we're going to take Nigerian name, we're going to take the infrastructure that Nigerians are doing currently in terms of railway, in terms of train to the global view. Among the cast are top-rated actors like Richard Mofedamijo, Tana Adelana, Tokpe Tedla, who gave a hint of their roles in the movie. Can I tell us about a girl who, um, who doesn't believe in love, but at the end of the day finds love? Ahmed is uh, in what I like to call a love triangle between uh, myself, Uzu Usman, and Rahama Sardaw. My character is a, uh, a, a woman, a hardworking woman, like a lot of Nigerian women in this country, that go through ups and downs, but have to show a positive, happy face, a happy front, um, even though she's going through a lot in her life. And all of those obstacles were faced by force on the train. The actors say Nollywood has advanced in all aspects, which is why a movie like this can be produced in Nigeria, adding that the audience will be pleased with the movie because it is full of all sorts of suspense, romance, creativity, and lessons to learn. Conversation in Transit is a movie that was shot in a moving train produced by Nigerian creative filmmaker Rogers Ofime and directed by Robert Peters.
Someone told me about the train ride from Lagos to Ibadan. I, I mean, I just flew in from Canada. I live in Canada. I just flew in and I'm like, okay, let's try it out. So I went on the ride and it was fun. And I'm like, you know what? We can actually have a story around this. The making of the movie was brought to a close as guest actor, RMD, and other casts joined in Cutting of the Cake. E-I-T. That's why we made it very interesting because they had to take permission from the government, you know. Yeah, and they gave them the opportunity to use the train for days to shoot the movie. Oh, I think, you know, apart from just being a movie in the train, I think this could be some sort of, you know, way of creating awareness that it could be a diversion of means very of transportation, true. Very you know, from, you know, maybe the road transport, flight, and also to avoid the traffic, the Lagos traffic that people complain about. So I don't know if you get what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. What, what, what am I saying? What you just said. <laughs> So you know what, let's draw the curtains on this week's episode of the program. Until we come your way next week. Keep watching us at DSTV 419 every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. And on Friday, NTA Network, 10 a.m. I am Putro Miller. And I'm Kemeny Williams. Salut. Salut.